Today we will write, compile, and run our first C programs. And to do this, you need two things. You need a text editor, and you need a C compiler. The text editor is what you use to create your source code, the text file that contains your program. And any text editor will work. You could use Emacs, Notepad, TextEdit, or even Microsoft Word. But whatever you do, you have to save it as a plain text file so there's no formatting or special characters that will confuse the C compiler. The C compiler is what takes that text file, that source code, and turns it into an executable that the computer can actually run. There's a number of free C compilers available for download. I recommend GCC, which stands for the GNU Compiler Collection. To invoke the C compiler, you have two ways you can do it. You can use an integrated development environment, or IDE for short, or you could use the command line, and I'll explain that in just a moment. An integrated development environment has an integrated text editor, a debugger, a menu-based way for invoking the C compiler, and lots of other features that simplify the creation of complex projects. But for your initial simple programs, I'm going to recommend that we do everything at the command line just to make sure that there's no hidden steps. You're probably using one of three operating systems, maybe the Mac operating system, maybe Linux, maybe Windows. And all of these operating systems have a command line environment available to them. In fact, the Mac operating system is built on top of Unix. And Unix and Linux are almost exactly the same thing. Windows is very similar, but has a few different commands, but I won't get into the differences. I'm going to be working with the Mac operating system, which means that I'm working with Unix. So to access the command line environment with the Mac, you can use a program called Terminal that lives under Applications Utilities. So let's go ahead and open a terminal window. Okay. And the first thing I might want to know is where am I in the directory structure? So I can type PWD for print working directory, and it tells me I'm in a directory called users Kevin. I want to create a subdirectory that will hold all of my programs. I'm going to call that directory C progs, and I'm going to change to that directory. And if I do PWD again, I confirm that I have changed to my new directory. Now, underneath all these programs, or in this directory, C progs, I'm going to create new subdirectories to hold each program. So I'm going to make a new directory called hello, change to that directory. Oh, first I can check to see if that directory has been created, and I can see, yes, the new hello directory is there. Let me change to that directory. And now I'm ready to create the source code for my first program. I'm going to use a text editor called VI. It's a very simple text editor. I don't really recommend it, but it comes with all Unix, Unix distributions, so let's go ahead and use it. So I do VI hw.c, and that's going to create a new file hw.c, and the .c appears at the end of every C source code. So let me go ahead and type the source code. Don't worry about the syntax at the moment. We'll get to that later. It's a rule that all initial C programs, your first C program has to say hello world. So we don't want to anger the C gods by flouting that convention. After printing hello world, the program returns. And that's it. That's our program, our first C program. So I'm going to save that and exit. I can now take a look at my directory, and I can see that the new file hw.c is sitting in the directory. If I want to see the contents, I can type more hw.c, and it gives me a program listing here. And now to compile it, I'm going to use the GNU C compiler, gcc. I'm compiling hw.c, and I'm going to call the output file hello. Let it run, and after a moment, I can look at the directory again, and I can see now that I have a new file called hello in addition to the initial source file, hw.c. Now to run that, I can simply type hello, and my program responds with hello world. And that's it. Now if instead of getting hello world as your response, you got command not found or something like that, it means that Unix didn't know to look in your current directory to find the command hello. 
To fix that, you can say dot slash hello, and the dot just means look in the current directory. And when I run that, I get the same thing.